Are you feeling burnt out running your business? Well, it doesn't have to be that way. In this video, I'm gonna show you five things you can do today to start making things easier right now. Now, before we get into the detail, if you've not come across it before, my name's Paul. I'm an accountant, I'm a CFO, I'm an entrepreneur, and I've got over 25 years of experience in helping businesses to grow profitably. Not only that, I've also run three businesses of my own. So believe me when I say, I know how difficult it can be as an entrepreneur, how lonely it can feel, and how easy it is to get burnt out if you're not careful, which is exactly why I put this video together. Right, before we get into the detail, I'd like you to do me one quick favor. If you've not done so yet, I'd like you to click the subscribe button because I'd love to be able to share new content with you every week. Uh, I put out regular uh, business information that hopefully you can use to help your business to grow profitably and give you the life that you really want. Okay, right. Well, uh, let's talk about burnout in, in business. I can tell you one thing. I've worked with hundreds of businesses over the years and pretty much every single entrepreneur goes through this at some time or other. So believe me, you're not alone. So, um, Let's just take a minute before we get into the detail. Just think about, well, how does this happen? What are the signs? How do you know you're burnt out? Well, it might sound like an obvious question, but actually, uh, generally, you know, burnout is very different from just feeling tired, okay? It's when things are going, you get past the tired phase and things just get a bit more extreme. You might be feeling that the demands of your, of your, of your job, your day-to-day -day activities are just they're too much for you, it, you know, the business wants more than you can give. You kind of feel a slave to the business, that you're working for the business rather than the business is working for you, which is kind of why you went into business in the first place, right? Perhaps you feel a lack of support from your family or friends or, or people around you. Or perhaps you feel that you're out of control, you don't know what you're doing. You know, I have to tell you one thing, the feeling of not knowing what you're doing is something that, again, all entrepreneurs uh, uh, feel and actually that's the one thing you probably do need to get used to because everything you do you try new things but if it, if it becomes too much it becomes overwhelming right uh, the other key sign of you kind of feeling you know burnt out is that you know you're not just tired but you're tired all the time you kind of feel your whole life is is at work you're chained to the desk or the workshop or whatever it happens to be you don't have any work-life balance you know the business is taking up so much of your life it's taking up much more than they actually you want to give or you're able to give and actually what's happening you're in a you know you're probably thinking you're in a far worse position than you were when you were perhaps doing other things working as an employee for someone else you probably started your business because you wanted a work-life balance. You wanted something which potentially meant you could be working less, that you'd have more money and more time to, you know, enjoy life and the things that are important to you personally. And quite often as businesses grow, if we're not careful, you know, it's that work-life balance, which is one of the first things that 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 that, that happen. And, and it can make us feel really low. And I, you know, those are kind of the, I guess, the signs, but you know, I'm very, very aware of this. It's happened to me personally um, a couple of times over the years. So I'm thinking particularly about the first business I ran. I, I, I had a, um, a retail store on the south coast of England. It was my first uh, first business that I'd set up. Prior to that, I'd been working as an employee, uh, as an accountant for, 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 for a rather large, um, rather large firm, um, for Gillette actually, which was a, an amazing place to work. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, I set up my own store, and um, you know, like any new business, you know, at the start it was tough, and I worked so hard, and it actually it was a real struggle to get the business going. And actually, the more that I struggled, the harder I worked, the longer the hours, the higher the stress. Even when I wasn't there, I could I was I was mentally there. I couldn't switch off. I couldn't sleep. You know, it, and and it's almost these things spiral because actually, whilst I had a very supportive you know partner and family, um, you know, respectfully. They didn't, they weren't in the same position as me. They didn't really understand the pressure that I felt under, even though, to be honest, it was me putting myself under most of that pressure. So I really know how difficult it can be and how, how once you're in this spiral, how hard it is to get out of. And that's really why I wanted to, to, to put this, uh, this video together today, because it's something which is really, really personal to me. Um, I've got five tips that, that work for me, works for me, and I really want to share them with you. Um, so we're gonna get onto those right now, but before we do, um, 
do drop me some comments below. I'd love to know if you feel like this. Have you ever been in a position where you felt kind of burnt out? And if so, what did you do about it? Have you got some tips that you can share with, with the rest of us? Because we'd all love to learn. And what I'm trying to do with this channel is build a community of entrepreneurs and sharing information with each other and helping each other to grow. So if you've got any tips, um, or just want to share your experience, do, do drop me a comment below. I'd really love to, love to, love to, love to read it. Okay, so I promised you five tips. You know, I'm hoping I've not kind of taken you right the way down. You're thinking, oh, Paul, you're making me feel even worse. Because now, I want you to take a step back and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna help you do something about it. Okay, so five tips I promised you. Here we go. Tip number one to combat burnout, just stop. <laughs> That's really, really important, you know. In as running our own businesses, we're all overwhelmed, consumed with the day-to-day. -day. But what you have to do if you want to break that spiral, you have to take a step back, just stop what you're doing, you know. Take a day off or whatever you need to do. Close the sh whatever it is for a day. You know, take a just stop and take a, st a step back, okay? Have a look at everything that you're doing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, all of those tasks, and just work out which, which of those tasks do you really need to be doing? Which ones are adding value? Do you have a goal and objective that you're working to over, say, the next two or three months? You know, if not, they're just, Set up a goal now, right? Um, but work out which one of the tasks that you're doing, what's adding value, um, what is, you know, and what really is, and what's just kind of admin. You know, this is, is you know, I, I can't remember who it's by now, but a really great uh, a piece of uh, business research which talks about the difference between things which are urgent versus important. And it's human nature to focus on the urgent things even though most of those things typically aren't important for, you, for your business. So it's well worth taking as time just to stop, assess what you're doing, work out which ones are at tasks are adding value, and which tasks do you enjoy doing and which ones do you hate? That's also really important because you're in business, you know, not just to make money, but because you want to feel fulfilled. So, you know, if you're doing something that's really business critical, but you hate it, then actually you need to work that out up front and then we can work out what we can do about it, okay? And that brings me on to, to points to step two, okay? So once you've stopped and assessed what you're doing, what value you're adding, and whether or not those tasks make you happy, you need to make a plan, okay? Uh, a very, very simple plan. And I mentioned it a minute ago about setting a short-term goal over sort of two to three months. What do you want to achieve in the short term with your business? And it doesn't have to be a huge thing. I'm not saying you have to kind of double your sales or get 20 new clients or anything like that. We're looking for a small, uh, a small win, a small objectives that you you feel you can achieve in the next two or three months. Okay, and that's what we're going to then use as our point of focus in terms of everything that we do for the next two or three months. Once you've got that point of focus, right? I want you to go back to the list of all the tasks that we just we just um, assessed in the first step and work out how those tasks relate to that goal, okay? That short-term goal. Which tasks can you stop doing, right? Which ones do you have to continue doing? Which ones can you pass to somebody else to do? You may not have a team, but could you use freelancers? Whatever it is, you know. And then also think about the goal. Oh, is there one or two things that actually you should start doing that would replace a couple of things that you stop? Now, the aim here is to try and reduce what you're doing in total, <coughs> excuse me, but focus on what you're doing, making sure those things do, do, do directly uh, um, lead to you achieving, uh, achieving that objective. And you'll have to be ruthless, okay? And this feels a bit uncomfortable to stop doing things and when we say stop, it's not necessarily stop, stop, right? It's saying, I'm not gonna do these things on a daily basis. I'm gonna, they're urgent, or they're important rather, but maybe I can do them weekly, or maybe I can do them fortnightly. And just think about that as well, but you are gonna to have to be ruthless and it will feel a bit uncomfortable for you to stop doing things because um, if you're like pretty much every other entrepreneur I've met, including myself, you know, the one thing about running your own business is that, you know, 
you tend to feel in control and you feel personally responsible for everything, okay? And so actually giving yourself a bit of a talking to, saying, I can let go of some of this control, I can give some other things to other people to help, or actually I am gonna stop this, and why am I gonna do it? It's, it's not scary because I've got a goal now and I'm just gonna do things which are gonna uh, you know, help me achieve that goal. That's really, really important. This doesn't have to be a huge thing, by the way. We're not talking like a week's worth of planning. It's literally, you know, a piece of paper for an hour, just jotting these things down and working out what you're gonna do about it, okay? So that's, and I think if you do those two things, right, say so this is literally a short-term process, you're gonna stop now, so that's what you're doing, come up with, a, a, you know, a target, something you wanna achieve in the next two or three months, and you know, changing, uh, focusing everything on achieving that, you're gonna feel so much better, okay? But it, it really, really works. Even the exercise of doing that, before you start making any changes, I guarantee will make you feel better. Okay, so that's the first two things I wanted to talk about, okay? The third thing isn't so much something to do, uh, but it is a change in mindset, okay? And that is, I want you to let go of perfectionism. Now, what I'm, what I'm not saying here is, whatever you do should be sloppy work, uh, whatever you do is like, eh, throw out there, who really gives a toss? I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is in my experience, again, working with, with, with hundreds of entrepreneurs over the years, entrepreneurs, we tend to be perfectionists. We want to do the best we can. We're putting something out there in the world to try and, you know, we want to sell stuff. We want to, you know, attract customers. We want it to, we want to have a nice brand, want it to reflect really well on us. Where there's a natural pressure to make sure everything is perfect. But the reality is, nothing will ever be perfect, and most of what we're doing in business is about trial and error and learning. And so what's much more important is actually uh, achieving progress you know, towards those goals that we just talked about, over perfection. So to do the best you can, but don't spend forever on things. You just need to be making progress. And that's really, really important, to let go of that perfectionism um, and prioritize progress over that at all costs. And then connected to that, you know, as I say, about making progress, the more you focus on how much progress you are making, even if it's small things, you need to really recognize that and celebrate that. All progress in business is, is great, it really is. Even if you do something and it's not work, then you decide to stop it. That's still progress because you've learned something and you've ruled that out and you're not going to do that again. So everything should be focused on understanding the progress you're making. Progress doesn't just mean more sales or more money in the bank or more profit. It's building a business. It's building your learning, your experience. And that's what I want you to focus on. Progress over perfection. Okay, that's point number three. Uh, point number four um, uh, some people are very good at this and some people are very bad at it. I'm naturally in the very bad camp, which is why I put it on here. And that is, I want you to uh, to look after yourself, prioritize yourself and enforce boundaries, okay? And what I mean by that is start saying no to people. Don't say, just do things which are the right thing for you and the business. And particularly focusing on those that short-term goal that we just talked about and don't do anything else that is gonna detract you from that. And it's hard saying no to people because most people don't like to disappoint other people, but it's really, really important. It's important for your business, it's important for your sanity. If you kind of think about where we started with this whole subject about you know, the, the symptoms of burnout and having too much to do, what we're trying to do with this exercise is reduce the amount of stuff you've got on your plate and just leave what's on your plate, the things you need to do to achieve results. And so therefore, you have to start saying no to, to people where things aren't critical and be protective of yourself, be protective of your time, okay? That brings me on to point number five. Your time is really important. When I say your time, I'm talking, I'm talking actually more about your free time, your personal time, rather than your business time. You know, you know, you know, you need to work hard running a business, but actually, you're in business to have a lovely lifestyle. And if you don't ring fence that time for you, protect your free time um, at all costs. 
You're never going to have a business that is going to make you happy. You know, frankly, that's a bit harsh to say, but that's my my personal experience. And working with with many entrepreneurs over the years, that's what we've seen. You know, so what do I mean by that then? So I mean, you know, have hours that you're going to work. It may be you have to work on a weekend, but say to myself, okay, I'm going to block out Saturday afternoon. I'm going to do that, but the rest of the weekend I'm going to have off. Whatever it is, I don't care what you do. You you work out what works for you, but enforce that time stop work at a certain time each day you know but block out when you're gonna have free time do other things and you make sure you stick to it don't let things creep you know there's a real nightmare a scenario that work always creeps doesn't it you get to the end of the day and you think oh i'm going to stop at six today um and in the middle of a task you think oh, i'll just finish this next thing you know it's 7 30 it's like oh you know i've missed dinner with the kids or whatever it happens to be so enforce that time that's that your free time your personal time should be your priority now we all know it's running our own businesses we probably going to spend quite a few hours at work so i'm not so you have to have the right balance between the two we've all heard about work-life balance but what i'm saying is set that balance in a way that you think is realistic to achieve what you need to from a business perspective but protect your free time and make sure you get it um, and do things for you that do things which are important you know book to go away you know go away for a weekend and leave the business book to go on a, a picnic or whatever it's to be meet up with friends you know just make sure you do what's important to you because otherwise your life will become your business and you'll find that you know you won't you won't be as happy as you as you as you can be you won't be achieving what i suspect you wanted when you went into business which was to have a really lovely lifestyle so anyway there we are so five things that you can do today and they're not big things uh, let's just recap them so you're gonna gonna stop take a step back and assess what you're doing and what value you're adding and whether it makes you happy you're going to build a plan something you know specific that you want to achieve that is by the way achievable in the next two or three months and tweak what you're doing so everything is focused on achieving that goal and you're not doing anything that's surplus. Number three, you're going to really let go of perfectionism and focus on progress over perfection and celebrate every win you have. Number four, you're going to enforce boundaries with other people, aka start saying no. So you're, you're really managing your workload and not taking on more stuff, right? And number five, you're going to prioritise your personal time, your free time, uh, and enforce that. Make sure that you get it and you stick to it. Use your diary, use whatever means that you're, uh, that you're disposed to do that, but make sure you do that. Anyway, I hope those were helpful. They're all quite simple. I mean, there's no real rocket science there, but trust me, they really, really work, and I'd really love you to give it a try. And also, I'd love to hear from you. Um, try those things. Drop me some comments below. Does the, do they work for you? Do they not work for you? Have you tried something else which you think others could benefit from? Let us know because we'd really love to hear from you. Um, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, what I've done, I've taken those five points and I've put them into a free fact sheet which you can download below. So you can doubt, you say you can have a look at it at your own time, work out how you can apply those to your own circumstances and start making a difference today. And if you download that free fact sheet, I'm actually going to give you another free fact sheet which is... Um, a, that covers the most popular topic I get asked about, which is all about boosting your cash flow in your business. Every business I've worked with never has enough money in the bank, like whether it's the biggest business or like a startup. And so what I've done is I've taken my, um, I guess my top 10 tips that I've picked up over 25 years working with hundreds of clients and distilled them down into say into a fact sheet that you can use to start making a difference to your bank balance today. And I'll say, I'll send you that as well as the pack sheet on today's session and hopefully you'll get some good value from it. Right, that's it, I'm gonna stop now. If you've not subscribed yet, hit the button now and I should look forward to seeing you in the next video.